So you're about to visit the Caribbean island of St. Martin, but you've never visited before and have no idea what to expect. Now, don't worry, I got you. Sit back and relax. This video is for you. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Rizal, the Traveling Island Girl, and every week I share another one of my travel adventures, especially of the Caribbean region, which is pretty much my backyard, so to speak. So I share with you all of the must do, see, eat, and sleep when it comes to all of the Caribbean islands that I've visited. And since I've been calling the island of St. Martin home for the past 20 years, it's only fitting that I do another video about my home island paradise. So if you are a first First time visitor to St. Martin, sit back and relax, grab that rum punch, that glass of wine, that coffee, if you will, and relax. And let me tell you everything you need to know about St. Martin. Before we get started, I want to remind you to check out this particular video, which I did about a year ago, also dedicated to you guys who are first time visitors to the island of St. Martin. So you might want to check it out at the end of this one. So let's start first off with the obvious, and that is that the island of St. Martin is the smallest landmass to be divided by two nations. It's part French and it's part Dutch, which also, of course, explains the difference in spelling of the name. So you have since Saint Martin on the Dutch side and Saint Martin on the French side. So there is really no other way of spelling it. It is either M double A R T E N or it's M one A R T I N. Don't spell it with double E. Avoid using it at all times, whether you're on the island or not. With the island being part French and part Dutch means also that there is a border. And this is where the obvious question comes that I get in my inbox all the time. And that is, is the border open? And the answer to that question is, yes, it is. According to the Treaty of Concordia that was signed back in 1648, it's a complete open border. And there is no checkpoint, there's no passport control. And really, the only way that you know that you've crossed from one side to the other is by the signs on the side of the road that either says bienvenue à la partie française or welcome to the Dutch side. Which brings me to the next point, languages. Of course, the official language on the French side is French and on the Dutch side you would think officially yes it is Dutch but technically nobody speaks it. Everybody speaks English. And don't worry about it since the island of, of St. Martin is quite touristic you'll be able to get quite far with the English language on the French side as well. So you have two different nations, one people, three currencies. Let's just make it a little complicated. On the French side, the official currency is the euro. On the Dutch side, it's the Netherlands Antilles Florins, NAFL. You'll see this on signs in supermarkets, etc. when you're here. But here comes the tricky part. The US dollar is accepted island-wide. So before you run off to the exchange office, please know that your currency, if you're coming from the US, that is, that you'll be able to use the US dollar island-wide. So that means that you don't really need to change the currency to our uh, national currency on the Dutch side, which is the Antillian Gilder, which is also what we call it, or to euros. You'll be able to use the US dollar. Speaking of the US dollar and uh, currencies, let's talk about credit cards. Credit cards are a accepted on in most businesses on the island but beware that American Express is not accepted everywhere so if American Express is your only credit card you might want to think about carrying mostly cash speaking of cash cash is important because there's a lot of smaller businesses and smaller restaurants that do not take cards so you might want to have cash on you at all times anyways all right so we've already established French side, Dutch side, and it sets the differences that this brings. Another one of those differences is, of course, the voltage. On the Dutch side of the island is 120 voltage, and on the French side of the island is 220. So you'll be using two different plugs if you're coming to the island. And this is good to know, if, especially if you are thinking of staying on the French side and you're coming from the US, Canada, or any other country that is used to using these two flat thrones, I think it's what it's called, 
or if of course if you're coming from Europe you're gonna be staying on the Dutch side you're used to this but you're gonna have to be converting to this so keep in mind wherever you decide to stay on the island use the correct voltage or come with the right adapters and transformers so that you are still able to charge your phone and other necessary equipment Another thing to know is that the island of St. Martin is not exactly divided into equal halves. The Frank side is much bigger than the, the Dutch side, but the Dutch side is where, where the biggest population lives. So you have about 41,000, according to official numbers at this time, 41,000 people that live on the Dutch side versus 39,000 on the Frank side. And this means, of course, that you'll see this when you get here, that there's quite a lot of people on such a tiny 37 square mile island. This also comes with its sets of traffic. Unfortunately, it is something that I don't like to address, but needs to be addressed anyways. Traffic is an, a very sad fact of the island. And you'll see this when you get here, but there are ways to still enjoy yourself and not get stuck in the traffic. And as I always say, you're here on vacation don't let a little minor thing like traffic keep you back from having fun so having said that about the French side being bigger than the Dutch side but having less people live on it let's also address the two different capitals because you have the capital of the French side which is Marigo and the capital of the Dutch side which is Philipsburg Philipsburg is known for great shopping especially when it comes to jewelry and electronics the French side is of course known for great food although the entire island is known for great food we're going to talk about that in just a second but mostly of course great fashion so this is what you need to know a little bit about when you're going to either side of the island both sides are great both sides have, have their uh, points of interest and their particular things that make it exciting there is no one side that is better than the next so if you've been doing any research before you get here to your end destination, St. Martin, you probably have noticed that the one thing that we are very known for is our airport. The Princess Juliana International Airport is right by one of our beaches and it is one of the most spectacular landings in the world. Everybody goes to the airport to see these big planes land and to get their pictures taken with landing or departing aircraft. Now here's something that a lot of people don't know. Did you know that the Frank site also has an airport and that the landings there are also kind of nice to see? So you have in the area of Grand Cas is the Grand Cas Airport or what it's officially called L'Esperance Airport and this airport although it's much smaller than the international airport on the on the Dutch side is where you'll get smaller aircrafts landing and departing daily to other uh, French uh, islands like Martinique, Guadeloupe, St. Barts, and sometimes also to Dominica. But now here's the thing that you need to know if you stand next or close to the pier in Grand Cas, you'll be able to see these planes land quite low, not as low and spectacular as on the Dutch side, but it's still quite a great side on its own too. So you might want to check that out when you're here. Okay, so it's time to talk about the Dutch side because there's something that needs clarifying. Because we are part of the Dutch kingdom does not mean that we have the same rules and regulations as the motherland, the Netherlands. So this means that marijuana, although legal in the Netherlands, is not legal on St. Martin. So don't think that you can just light up and enjoy yourself. Um, although marijuana is of course used, I'm not going to tell you it's not, it is done on a down low. It is not yet completely accepted or it has not been legalized so you will not be able to smoke it in public. And another thing to know is that although uh, the Netherlands has already accepted most things like of course marijuana and some other recreational drugs and as well as legalized gay marriage gay marriage is another one of those things that is not yet legal on the dutch side so things to keep in mind the next thing we need to address is especially for those of you who are thinking of renting an airbnb or a villa and this means that if you're renting an, a vacation rental airbnb that you're probably going to be in one of our residential areas if that's the case you're going to be hearing dogs barking it's not 
a definite. Um, it depends, of course, on which area you have decided to stay in. But barking dogs is common in the whole of the Caribbean. And this is something that I wanted to address in this video because I hear this from a lot of Airbnb hosts that they're getting it. And I've read it also on their reviews that people complain about barking dogs. Barking dogs in the Caribbean is like going to New York and having all these sirens and alarms going off at all times of day and night. So it's the same. You guys in New York have, you know, the alarms and the sirens and we have the barking dogs in the Caribbean. So it's something that you'll get used to. Um, it's something that uh, you don't have a choice but to get used to if you're staying in a particular place. Uh, so don't be surprised if you're going to get some dogs barking in the middle of the night. Again, this is not something that is common in all residential areas. It's just a few. Before I address the last thing on this list today of most asked questions when, for first time visitors to St. Martin is that you need to know that the island is, has nicknames. It is known as the Friendly Island officially and this is what we use in, as a slogan in our marketing campaigns most of the time. We also use that it is European and with a lot of Caribbean so you'll get that as well. But the one thing that we are really known for is our many, many nationalities and thus our many, many restaurants, which gives us the nickname Gourmet Capital of the Caribbean. So you'll be interested to know that you will have so many choices of restaurants to dine at, to lunch at, to brunch at. It is so many that you're probably going to be leaving with a whole list of places that you didn't get to visit, which is only great because that means you'll be coming back soon. It really doesn't matter whether you're on the French side or the Dutch side. There are great restaurants on both sides of the island. So speaking of restaurants and visiting restaurants on the island, let's talk about the last thing on the list today, and that is tipping. Because a lot of you are a little confused about whether you should tip or not. So let me first of all tell you that in the restaurants on in some of the restaurants on the Dutch side of the island, you'll see that there's already a 15% service charge added to the bill. What you need to know is that the standard tipping percentage is 15 to 20% of your total bill. But if you already have the service charge, we leave it up to your discretion if you want to give a little extra because you thought the service was great. or you thought it was exceptional and maybe you want to give a little bit more, but that is up to you. But standard is 15 to 20%. And with that, we've come to the end of this video. And I really do hope that you found this video to be very informative and you've gotten some really valuable information out of it. But I'm curious to know which one of the points that I've listed in this video that you think was the most interesting or were you the most surprised about let me know in the comment section below also on a little side note another important fact for you to know is that i do give island tours if i'm on the island and i also give customized one hour consultations over zoom so if you're interested in knowing a little bit more or you want my help in organizing yourself for your first time visit to the island a little bit better and you want all of your questions answered all you need to know is book that one hour with me and of course when you finally get to the island book that island tour so i can take you around my beloved island and show you everything that is so special about st martin and with that thank you so much all for watching i'm getting the sun a little bit in my eyes now it is that time of day that i need to tell you adieu i do hope that you join me again for my next video until next time my name is rizelle the traveling island girl have a great one